like we're leaving at <laughs> three in the morning to go to the woods. It is three in the morning, and we are on a Saturday night or Sunday morning. This is what we live for. Today we're heading to the North Woods in Forest County to search for boreal species and winter finches. Yeah, what's the one you're hoping to see most? The woodpecker. The black back woodpecker. With a high volume of coniferous woods and spruce bogs, Forest County is home to some of the most specialized and elusive birds in Wisconsin. With such an expansive habitat, birds in the North Woods can often seem few and far between. This was the case earlier in the year when we searched an entire day to be rewarded with just 15 minutes of pine gross beaks and bohemian waxwings. Even with the knowledge that it could take all day, we were excited at the prospects of locating some of these boreal specialists. I'd like to get a good picture of a gray jay. That'd be pretty cool. But I could let that I could let that idea go. I'd be okay with getting a good picture of a boreal chickadee. But I could let that go. After a long four hour drive, we finally started getting close to the place where boreal species can be found. I don't know how much stuff gets reported this early on the road. I don't know how many people stop and try to hear. Most stuff I find is usually after the road ends. You get to the dirt. Since we arrived before sunup, we had time to listen for owls. We heard nothing but an eerie silence indicative of the North Woods. But not to be deterred, as night melted into day, we began walking Sheltered Valley Road listening for anything resembling bird calls. While we did hear a few black capped chickadees, it wasn't until about a half hour later that we had our first real excitement of the trip. The white winged crossbill is a medium sized inhabitant of the boreal forest. Its unique hook shaped bill is used for extracting seeds from the cones of trees. A single individual can eat up to 3,000 conifer seeds per day. Their key identification features are their distinctive bill and two large white wing bars, which are present in both males and females. Feeling good about our sighting, we continued down Sheltered Valley Road. Well, I mean, it would be nice if like one would perch nice, you know, lower on a tree, like at eye level or whatever. However, after our initial crossbill sighting, we walked for two more hours down Sheltered Valley Road without seeing or even hearing any more birds. With the snow gently starting to fall and the forest going quiet, we got a feel for how vast and seemingly empty the North Woods can be. After more walking, but no more sightings, we decided to head to the town of Alvin. It was on our way there that we had our next great sighting, red crossbills. The red crossbill is identified in Wisconsin by its bill shape and lack of wing bars. Color in males and females is widely variable, but males are normally reddish yellow or greenish, and females are grayish green. Both males and females have dark colored wings and lack the distinctive white wing bars present in white winged crossbills. After spending some time admiring the red crossbills, we continued to Alvin in search of evening gross beaks. With their bright colors and increased scarcity, evening gross beaks are always a welcome find. Since they are reported in Alvin every year, the small town has become a destination for birders taking trips to the North Woods. The best way to find them is to watch the bird feeders. We were easily able to find several black capped chickadees, white and red breasted nut hatches and purple finches, one of which was a bright male. What do we got here? Is that a red-bellied woodpecker? That's a good bird up here. It's definitely a red-bellied woodpecker. 
Although red-bellied woodpeckers are common in most of Wisconsin and the United States, it wasn't until recently that their range began expanding northwards to places like Galvin. After making several more loops around the feeders, we did eventually find an evening grosbeak. Unfortunately, it only gave us quick and obstructed views before it flew off. After leaving Alvin, we decided to abandon the roads and head directly into the bog in search of a blackback woodpecker. After finding plenty of evidence the woodpeckers were in the area, but coming up short on finding a blackback, we decided to head out of the north woods and go back home. On our way out, we did manage to find an American tree sparrow. Much like dark-eyed juncos, American tree sparrows increase in numbers during the winter months. They can often be seen in fields or at bird feeders in large numbers. They can be identified by their white wing bars, rufous crown, and dark chest spot. After having success in finding winter finches, but failing to find any of the resident boreal species, we decided we may have to go elsewhere to ever get a good look at them, even if that meant venturing out of Wisconsin. Hey, that's what we're banking on. I was gonna make this whole thing. It's gonna make us the millions. Exactly. Or the government's gonna shut us up and take all of our stuff. Probably. I think the latter would be true. In both crossbill species, breeding is opportunistic. This means that they will breed when resources are sufficient. They have been recorded breeding in all 12 months. Additionally, the crossbill's unique beak shape helps them to break into cones. The biting muscles of the mouth are stronger than their opening mouth muscles, and as a result, they put the tip of their beak under the cone scales and bite down to open them. They then eat the seed held within. 